Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We give God thanks. We want to do a few praise and worship choruses. Welcome to everyone. We can only accommodate 10 persons in it. In the, in the church, we will sing some praise and worship, and then we will start. Sister Pollyanna was a Christian, and she loved God. Amen? Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Touching Jesus, he's
Jesus. We give God the glory, we give God the praise. Let us all consecrate our hearts to the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we glorify your name. We exalt you and we lift you up. And Lord, we come before you. And I pray, God, you just wash us, consecrate us, Lord, I pray. As we're in your house to worship. Despite the settings, Lord, you deserve all the glory. You deserve all the praise. You are still God. So, Father God, I pray that you will bless today's service, the order. Oh God, the family of the deceased, our church members, I pray as you place everything in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Sister Pollyanna was a worshiper. Amen? She was a worshiper. We're going to sing a few worship choruses and then we're going to invite Reverend Williams to come with the opening bars and then we get into the program. It's amazing.
He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And because of that word today, we believe that our sister, she has not died. She's just sleeping in the arms of her Savior until the Lord returns. I have not seen nor hear her, neither has it entered into the hearts of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them to us by his Spirit. And finally, the word of God says to us, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, say the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works to follow them. I believe my sister is resting from her labor. She was a hard worker for the Lord. And it sets an example for us that if we're not yet working, work, do your work, because the time comes where we can rest from our labor and our works shall follow us. God bless you as our moderator continues with the rest of the service. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Williams. Praise the Lord. We invite everyone to stand as we turn to our program and we'll be singing the opening hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. This song was Sister Pollyanna's song, her closing song. Once you go and look for her in the hospital, she will say, It Is Well. And today we sing, It Is Well, It Is Well With Our Soul. Well, peace, love.
for today. We thank you for who you are. And God, as we are here in the Thanksgiving service of our dear sister, who we thought in your will to take her. But Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus for us that remain as we celebrate her life today, that God will oceanize us, you will bless us. Lord, you will give us comfort. Lord, you will give us peace. Lord, you will give us joy. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, just as how you always present yourself, present yourself today in your house. And help us, Lord, as a church to continue to give you the glory, to give you the praise, and to give you the adoration, because all the glory belongs to you. Take full control again, Lord, of today's service, as we place everything in your hands, in Jesus' name. Let the church say, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. At this time, we invite Joseph Luna, the brother of the deceased, to come, and he will be reading the first lesson, which is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 to 58. Stop. 
the journey is slow. And when the journey finally ends, we'll claim a great reward and find an everlasting peace together with the Lord. That's the sister Pamela. On behalf of the Mother Church of God, we extend our deepest condolences to the bereaved family, our family. We are saddened by the passing of our dear sister Pamela. And even more sad that we are at a juncture where we cannot pay our last respect in full numbers. And trust me, if we allow this COVID-19 thing, we will have space to hold God's woman touch many lives. Tomorrow marks our birthday, April the 26th. I know that you are dressed up. Come to church tomorrow. Well dressed. And we will not be able to celebrate the church and stand up and sing happy birthday. You know, we're going to be taking a lot of pictures now. Yes. So, Sister Pagliana is all about celebrating life. Sister Pagliana, as she affectionately called, gave her heart to the Lord in 2012. And she attended candidates' class and was baptized and given the right hand of fellowship on May 27, 2012. Since then, she has matured and very active in the church. A good soldier of the Lord. I mean, Sister Pollyanna was very, very active. She has done ex exceptionally well, extraordinary well in the ministry over the years. You know, from 2012 to 2020, you know, she has done extraordinary well. Serving as secretary of the ladies' ministry, teacher, yes, of the adult Sunday school class, but you know, the quick maturity, she, she blossomed very quickly. Sing on the choir, I mean, she didn't get a chance to sing at our convention. She had even a, a particular song she had to sing, and she was responsible for when she realized she had to go in the hospital. She was really disappointed that she wasn't able to be at our last convention. But as always, when we visit her, she said, every way it is well. She was a good moderator. Yes, she delivered a few inspirational sermons. And one of her last sermons, I remember she, she, she preached right here. She said, But God, the control shot. Somebody tell us you're going through. But God, amen. And she preached that something, understanding who her God is, despite the situation, despite the condition. God is worthy to be praised. Amen.
closest cousins. This one is from Karen, and she spends some time in Texas during her time of him. It is never easy to say goodbye to anyone who you know and care about and when that person is a relative. The pain intensifies as you go through the never-ending phases of mourning and missing them. Firstly, I still can't see you gone, but I am thankful for you helping to care of me during my most vulnerable time. Thank you for words of encouragement and thanks for the meals while I couldn't do it for myself. I am thankful for our talks and your determination to push through and see the simplicity in going around obstacles. I learned from you that once God is in my life, every day grace, mercy, and strength is always good. I am forever thankful for you and I will miss you. Love, Karen. From Anne Marie. The moment that we, the moment that you died, my heart was pouring to one side fell with heartache on the other side died with you. I often lie awake at night when the world is fast asleep, taking a walk down memory lane with tears upon my cheek. Seems like yesterday we were fighting over who should get the last dumpling. Seems like yesterday we were in Tennessee and joined the mountains while hiking. Seems like yesterday we exchanged pictures of us wearing the same socks. Seems like yesterday we were pouring, we, we were exploring the San Antonio Rock River walk dogs. Remember you, remember you, it's easy but I do it every day. But we see you brings a party that never goes away. Love and Mary. And the last one from her sister, Nicole. My heart aches at your passing. There is always if I knew, but when I saw you in February, I didn't have the slightest thought that it would be the last time I saw you and your beautiful smile. You don't wish me a happy birthday last month. And tomorrow you will not reply when I text you happy birthday. I did not know losing you would make me feel so empty and broken inside. I cry daily, but I take comfort knowing it was well with your soul. This feels like a bad dream. You were my big sister, my only sister. I look up to it, but you left me. Now I have no more sister to talk to. I know you were in a real pain, and God saw it fit to take your pain away, even though it means taking me away. No longer, no more, for you are now with your Savior, singing and rejoicing in the heaven of life. As much as I would love you being here with us, I know you are at peace. I will forever cherish your memories. I'm holding close to my heart. Loving you always. Rest well, my sister. And these are tributes from our close relatives that are unable to make it due to this issue of corona and pandemic currently. 
a good goal of how many parties, how many Poland parties, you know, was her favorite thing to do. She was loving and nourishing for siblings. And so when she became a mother of both Marlon and Shanice, being a caring mother of being an entrepreneur, he was a proud mother and grandfather. She was everything for her children. She loved nothing more than being pampered by Shanice. She loved getting her scalp scratched and her foot stuck. He lived a simple life and one day hoped that she'd get married. And would jokingly say to Shanice, when I get married, I'm going put you out. You know, and that's why, as you can see, today he's not married because Shanice made sure of it. She didn't want to leave her mother's side. Throughout her life, she was humble, kind, respectful, and God fearing. So it was no surprise when she accepted Christ as her Lord. She was baptized in 2012, soon and soon after, to the right hand of God. She was a true believer, a woman, a woman of God, and tried to live every day, serving Him, living by His words. She encouraged others to follow soon, and soon her mom, a sinner, was baptized. She was an active member in the church. In the church of God, being a member of the choir, Sunday school teacher, she was always helping out with rallies, conventions, health fairs, barbecues, whatever the cause, she was there. During her last days of suffering and real pain, she never faltered but stood firm in her faith, accepting her to be slow that it is well in her soul. Although he lived a single and humble life, she left behind a great place. Not well or riches, but a perfect example of a devoted servant of God. She was well love and kindness towards her family and friends. She was a woman of integrity. And in Proverbs 24 verse 1 says, if you have to choose between a good reputation and great wealth, choose the a good reputation. He had a smile that would like an enemy, a heart of good, full even though she's not here with us at present this year, her memories will be with us. He leaves behind father, mother, four sisters, six brothers, her two children, Marlon and Shanice, and her three grandchildren. Rest in peace. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Mr. Luna. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. And why did you not speak to him? Yes, oh Lord, she will be truly missed. Ah, she will be truly, truly missed. I am, I, I, I hope after all this is over, we will definitely have a big memorial service in honor of this fantastic woman. Yes, man, who has really touched She really, when she gave her life to the Lord, impacted many. Let them know that God is real. Amen? She calls, she just doesn't know him. She knows, she doesn't know, she knows, she knows and she feels. Amen? She was a worshiper man. At this time, I invite Reverend Dr. Ray Carl Williams to come. And he's going to bring the word of the Lord. Shall we bless the Lord? Praise God. We want to manage time. And, um, I want to be very brief as I share with you today. I make sure I try to keep my notes very short. Because when you preach, 
Most times it's not from the notes that comes. There's other things that the Lord will show. So if you have too much notes and then the Holy Spirit gives you some more, then it's going to be a long thing. Amen? Bless the Lord. And uh, I'm glad you know that we can share in this way. And I know some of the members of the Model Church of God are jealous that we cannot be here today. And a few are on the outside helping to manage things. And I want to just say thanks to all the members of the Model Church of God who are here today. Those who came and viewed the body and they have left. Want to give God thanks for you. Want to thank the family for giving us this opportunity to meet in this way. Because you know you would have made a decision to do otherwise. But you know you have chose to bring the body here for us to you know come to terms with what is a reality for us today. Amen. And I want to draw, I want to just extend my greetings to all of you and I want to draw your attention to the book of St. Mark, chapter, um, chapter 4, and I want to read verses 36 through 41, St. Mark chapter 4, and I want us to pay attention to the word and pay attention to what we're going to be looking at today, and as I said, I will be very brief, within 10 minutes I should be through, Amen. So you pray for me that we finish in 10 minutes. Amen. So the word of God says, And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in a ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hindered part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and they say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it? that he have no faith. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? I want to share with you the theme coming to grips with the sudden experience. Father, we want to thank you for today. We want to thank you, God, that you are able to help us in our times of crisis. We want to thank you, God, that you are with us and you will never leave us nor forsake us. Even now, Lord, we commend our time in your hands. And we ask, God, that you will open up to us your truth. And help us, God, to be encouraged today and that our hearts be challenged. This we ask in Jesus' name. Let everybody say, Amen. Amen. So the scripture here is telling us an account of a sudden storm. And this helps us to know that in life, there can be sudden experiences, sudden occurrences. And I want to share with you about coming to grips with these sudden experiences. Yes, we realize that a sudden storm came upon the people and this helped them to turn to Jesus. They realized that the wind was so boisterous and that they could not manage on their own. And so even though it seemed like Jesus was asleep, they went to him and awake him because they knew that in him there was power. Hallelujah. And the word of God says that Jesus was asleep in the hindered part of the ship. That is the back part of the ship or the stern of the ship and he was resting on a pillow. And so when you look at it, the disciples, they fearful and so they turn to him for help. Are we fearful today? We can turn to our Lord for help. And the key thing that we realize in the scripture is that although Jesus he was in the ship there was no all this, the, the suddenness and, and this uncertainty still came their way. So no matter how much Jesus is in our lives we must be prepared for the unexpected. We must be prepared And when this situation comes, you and I must know where our source lies because of our source lies in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Can somebody say amen today? And so Jesus, he rebuked the wind and he questioned the fear and he questioned the faith of his disciples. 
backbone of the family. And I trust that when you're called to be that backbone, you do your part and do it well. Can I hear an amen today? Hallelujah. So in life, sometimes, some things, we don't have control over it. Sometimes, the things that, that, that are there, we want other people to do it. They must do something for it to happen. And there are times where we're going to be through situations that cannot be explained. It cannot be understood. But we, ah, we need to come to the terms today that God is with us. And in the midst of what we're going through, don't allow fear to replace your faith. Continue to keep your faith on Jesus. Don't let your faith waver. Don't lose your hope in times of crisis, in times of hurt, in times of pain, in times of sorrow. Maintain your faith in God. Yes, lift your eyes onto the hills from whence cometh your help. Because your help cometh from the living God who makes the heaven and the earth. Hallelujah. We have to remember that in death, there death is an appointment for everyone. And I'm sure that Sister Pollyanna was prepared for her appointment. Yes, and that's why she could have said that it is well. Because she had prepared for that assignment, that appointment. And you and I also must be prepared for this appointment. For we know that the day or the hour when our number shall be called. We know In the midst of our confusion, in the midst of our crisis, let us seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Do not forsake him in this season because we need him now more than ever. Hallelujah. Just as our God was in control of that storm at sea that day, he was in control of our sister. He was well aware of what she was going through and indeed of our God he continues to administrate over the affairs of man so he knew every time that she called out because of the pain he knew every time that she groaned yes and every time that she had been through her experience he was there bringing his comfort and his assurance hallelujah when I pray with her this Saturday before she passed, in my spirit, I felt that there was coming a change. And I said to her that it will soon be over. And I thought that the pain would have been gone. The doctors would have diagnosed well. And she would have been released. But it was not so. The change was that her time would have ended. And when I said that to her, I shaked her hand. She gave that confident, confident consolation that yes, she believed that the change was coming. Hallelujah. So now it's painful for us to, to come to terms with it. I am assured and I have the peace in my heart that she accepted that this was the Lord's doing. And indeed, it is marvelous in his eyes. So I look at it with good, with a good thought today that the Lord, he knows what he's doing and for that I give him praise. So it may be hard for us to understand. It may be hard for us to really accept this. But let us understand that if we live close to the Lord, we are going to see her again in the sweet, sweet by and by. So today as I wrap up this sermon, I want to say to you that whatever you're going through today, you can turn to the Lord. He's able to help you. He's able to bring you comfort. He's able to help you to understand. And he's able to bring peace to your storm. Hallelujah. It is better to have Jesus with you as you go through your storm than to be going through this life of uncertainty, this life of various challenges and do not know the Lord. And although it, uh, Lord Jesus is with you today, there's no guarantee that you will not experience the unexpected and the sudden occurrences. But no matter how difficult, yes, no matter how difficult, your sudden encounters or your sudden experiences, I want to 
to challenge you that with God you shall make it because he's right by your side. Hold to the faith that you have and know that he's going to lead you on to victory and he's able to sustain you with his, with his grace and his love. And for those of you who do not know the Lord as your personal savior, I want to challenge you to have a relationship with him. Yes, get to know him now before the time should change into eternity. Get to know him so that you have an assurance and a confidence that you have a savior and you have a comforter and you have a Lord. Oh, when someone to say, I've got somebody with me to share my heavy load. I can feel So Lord, even now we pray that our prayers will be answered. 
answered in memory of her, her birthday to you. And I pray, mighty God, that you will bless this family in their going out, in their coming in from this time forward and even forevermore. Thank you, God, for them, Lord, as we commend them to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for our church family as well. As we grieve, may you continue to give us comfort. We pray, Lord, for those who slumber and those who, who are not ready to work, that God, they will see the need. They will see the vacancy that is now created and begin to rise to the challenge to do what you have called us to do. And may you give us strength. May you give us hope. May you give us your blessing, mighty God, as we continue to trust in you. Have your way, mighty God, as we will leave the service this, this morning. May you journey with us. Give us safe journey mercies. Oh God, let your comfort and your peace go before us. Let your protection be sure. Oh God, protect us from accidents and danger. And oh God, as we go forward, we want to keep our eyes on you because you are our living God. Thank you, God, for hearing our prayers. And we commend our spirit in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. So we're going to do the benediction. Any final word, minister? Okay, we're going to do the benediction and then we will have the recession of him. I will be leaving the platform, the platform clergy, very small today. We will be going forward and then the family and the casket will follow. Amen, amen, amen. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance and give you peace in this dark world, both now and forevermore. God bless you, our moderator. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Reverend Williams. Wonderful. We're going to sing to God be the glory. Great things he has done as the closing hymn. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. So God be the world that he gave us his son.